Today, we're talking about how you can make your own API. Okay, so I've been working with a lot of APIs recently, having to develop my own, having to integrate with others, and I wanted to give just a real basic look at how you can get started and create your own API from your own hosting account, creating the ability to get data, write data in, and just understand the real basic level of an API and how to interact with them. Okay, so to get things going, what we're gonna to need to do is uh, obtain a hosting environment, a place where all well, your code, your databases, all the calls can be made to. Now, this is effectively a website. Uh, you could look at it as, uh, as an alternative. And so what we need to find is a hosting company. Now for this example, I'm gonna utilize GoDaddy uh, because it's cheap, easy to use, uh, has cPanel, has PHP MyAdmin, which allows me to easily manipulate MySQL tables. And that is one of the most important things. We need to be able to easily manipulate MySQL tables and be able to easily interact with like a file manager. So like through FTP connection or something like that. Uh, for me, GoDaddy is simple. For uh, something where you're getting a bit more robust, something that you know is gonna have a, a lot of traffic, you're gonna wanna find something like utilizing Google Cloud or Amazon's buckets. Uh, something that's a bit more robust when you get to a more sizable level. But for straight up plain usage for an example, we're gonna run with GoDaddy. Okay, so I've gone through the creation process on GoDaddy to set up a basic cPanel account. Uh, so now I have a blank website. So I've got, uh, if I head to the codingarm.com, we'll now get a coming soon page because that's the default of GoDaddy. So what we're gonna do is, in here, we're gonna do a few specific things. We're now going to create a dummy database table, a reading and a writing function uh, to that table as well. So let's start with the table. So in cPanel, and I'm gonna assume you have cPanel here, you're gonna have PHP MyAdmin. If you don't have PHP MyAdmin, you're gonna have some sort of MySQL uh, based interaction tool. If you don't have that, uh, then you're gonna start running challenges because then you're gonna have to do it through code. I definitely recommend getting a host that allows for something like PHP MyAdmin. Okay, so now that we're in PHP MyAdmin, you're able to see down the left here uh, all the databases you currently have. In my one, I actually don't have any pre-set up databases. Uh, I'm gonna have to set one up myself. I'm gonna assume um, that you're gonna be in a similar boat, but if you do have a pre-existing one, you can continue to use that. In here, um, we're gonna go back to cPanel and just set one up. So let's search for the word database, and let's just use the database wizard because it makes the process pretty simple. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna call the database uh, API, API data. Go next step. And then we're gonna set up a user with a password. So I'm gonna pause this so you don't get my username and password. Okay, and so once you're past uh, setting up the username, we want to uh, select what privileges we want to have. In my case, uh, I'm just going to select all privilege privileges. If you did want to only allow very specific actions like getting data out and inserting data, you could choose just very specific privileges here. So as an example, for what we're wanting to do here, we're just wanting to allow a user to select some data out and also be able to insert some data in. So you could just select these two. Now it's worth noting that we're going to continue this series and expand it out further. So I'm gonna select uh, all privileges for now uh, because in time I'm most likely gonna want all of those. And so now we've uh, finished the wizard. So now if we go back to PHP my admin, so let's go PHP my admin. We'll now see uh, in the PHP my admin area down the left side is some API is an API data uh, database. Okay, so now that we have the API data database set up, what we need to do is actually go through and create some, uh, or at least a table. Now you can have uh, many tables. Tables are utilized to store information um, that can be retrieved later. So we're gonna just create a real basic API here um, and I'm gonna call this table uh, API information. 
and the number of columns are, we're going to have, let's just specify four columns for now, and we can change this at a later date. So we're going to hit go. We're going to create an ID. So that is a unique identifier um, for each entry in this um, system. We're going to leave the type as an integer. We're going to set the length to 11. We want um, its index to be primary. And we will have this auto increment. Um, ah, there it is. I was going to say it's normally on this screen, but it was hiding. Uh, so we have an identifier. We are going to put in a. We're going to put in a a post title, and then post information. We're going to make the post title uh, a varchar, so that is a string of up to 255 characters. It might be excessive for a title, but that's fine. And we're going to make the post information a text element uh, so they can continuously just grow. And we're also going to create a creation date field uh, so that we can keep a record of, of when these occur. So we're going to make this a date time uh, based entry. And we're not going to allow any nulls. So we're going to hit save. And that's now going to be our table. So we're going to be storing a unique identifier for each entry the post title, so a visual title for the user, the information related to that, and the date that it was created. So now that we have the database set up and uh, the tables for that set up as well, what we need to do is utilize an SFTP or FTP connection to the server uh, and set up all our requesting to, uh, uh, to be able to insert the information and also to read it back. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to be utilizing Sublime with the SFTP extension. Um, you can use Dreamweaver, you can use whatever you have. You could use cPanel as well, just using the file manager. Um, not a big fan of that because it doesn't show all the code and all that sort of stuff, but um, I just find Sublime easier. So there's a few different steps we need to um, go under. We need to firstly have a connection to the database. Uh, with an active uh, connection to the database, then we're able to go through and actually allow a user to insert some information when they have relevant credentials. And then we also have the ability to allow them to read information out of the database when they have relevant credentials. Um, now these credentials uh, could be as simple as a string that they have to enter in, almost like a password, um, or it could be even no credentials. You could just have Anyone can call this as long as they know that this endpoint is uh, is available. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to set up the basic code for uh, a MySQL database connection. Um, and then we're going to go through and do the read and writing sections. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put in the basic level of uh, MySQL connection to the database. There's a lot more error handling, a lot more you could do here. Uh, but we're just going real basic here just to get things started. So. Uh, basically, I've written a function that takes uh, sets a host name, database username, password, and database name. I've kept these all blank for right now, so you can't find my information. Uh, we're then creating a MySQL connection uh, using the variables that we have set, and uh, we're then effectively just checking to see if the connection had a error or not. Uh, if it if it has an error, then we're going to return that to screen and exit the script. Otherwise, we're going to return the connection for the user. So uh, we're going to have a variable here called connection, and we're going to utilize the function that we just created. So that's going to allow us to create a connection. Uh, what we then need to do is figure out what operation are we actually doing here? Like, are we inserting data? Are we uh, reading data back out? So let's just uh, write another function which is going to allow us to get some information out. So we're going to have a function that allows us to understand if, what what action is this user looking to take. So um, we're going to call this function get the data uh, just for something fun. Uh, we're going to need to send through a key and what this is going to do is it going to, it's going to look for uh, information that the user is sent through by different different means. So we're going to have um, the return value is going to default to nothing uh, at first. And then we're going to have basically if the if is set, 
um, if the dollar underscore post dollar key, so if someone sends through a, a form which includes the key of whatever whatever value we need to obtain, then we want the return value to equal that information. Wow, learn to type. Uh, if that isn't set, then we're just going to look for if they did this via a get. And this is going to come down to how you actually want to um, utilize your system. Like if, if you're looking to just um, test from a few different angles, then this is probably the easiest way to write this sort of function um, because then it's just global to everything. Everything that you're obtaining from the, from the request um, is either going to look for the post first and then look for the get second. Um, you could just get the post if you know that every time it's going to be via a post request or get if you know every single time it's going to be via a get request. This just allows a bit of flexibility between utilizing your browser as a testing ground and also utilizing something like Postman, uh, which we'll go into a little bit later. So that's going to allow us to now send a request off. So we're going to do, before we make the connection, we're actually going to see um, request type. So we're going to get the data for request type. So that's going to look for a variable in the um, in either the post request or the get request that's called request type. And we're just saying if it's not empty, so if there's an actual value set, then we want to begin the process of let's get the connection going. Let's let's um, then make the read write processes. So. We've got a connection. Now let's do the actual reading. Uh, no, let's let's start with the write actually, because that's obviously going to make more sense when we don't have any data in there at the moment. Okay, so let's get started with writing a function out. So we're going to create a function called um, insert data. Yeah, insert the data. Um, and in this, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're not going to send through any variables. We could send through any variables and make it a bit more um, robust, but we'll just run with this for now. So we're going to get the information in this function. So we're going to retrieve the post title because we had post title. Post title is one of the items uh, in the in the database table. So we want to get the data on the post title, and we also want to do that for the post information because that was another field uh, in the database table as well. Uh, along with that we want to have a creation date that we're going to uh, insert into the database. Uh, I believe the default for GoDaddy is, it goes year, month, day with dashes between and then hours, minutes, seconds. So that should be the default, uh, I believe that's the default date format. Could be wrong, we'll find out when we insert the data. Uh, so what we need to do is effectively now write uh, the actual MySQL uh, insert function itself uh, into, the, into the database so that we can basically say for this information we want to do this. Uh, so let's, let's write out, uh, basically we, we need to insert the information that is the post title, the post information and the creation date because the ID will be automatically generated uh, into, like uh, it will be automatically generated when we write it out. So let's create an SQL statement uh, where we want to do inserts into, and we're going to insert that into our API information table. And then what we're doing is we're specifying the, the actual columns that we have. Uh, so we've got the post title, the post information, and the, oops, and the creation date. And what we're doing is we're gonna set the, the values for these. So the related value then on this itself, uh, which will be the post title and the post information variable and the creation date variable as well. Now, this the way I'm doing this is quite, uh, I guess, Dangerous is probably the best way to put it in that this has got no validation on the actual data that has been sent through. So if you were to send some information through that was harmful, um, like a MySQL injection, 
uh, yes, you would be able to get uh, get this through. Now, I've realized I've missed one critical piece that I didn't send through here, which is the actual connection variable. Uh, so we, we're going to need the connection variable, otherwise we can't make the SQL statement. Uh, so we need the connection, we're going to make a query, and the query is going to be on the SQL itself. And basically we're putting this into an if statement so that we can confirm whether it actually uh, successfully went through or not. So uh, if it goes through successfully then we're going to return true, uh, otherwise we're going to we're going to, well, we'll do the same sort of thing. We're going to exit. So we're going to echo. Actually, I don't like this. I like going the other way around, actually. So the return is always going to be at the bottom of the file. And the error handling occurs between. I don't know why I started writing it that way. So we're now going to have a echo failed to insert data to MySQL. And so that's just a real rough uh, inserting the data. So I'm going to switch over to Chrome and we're going to actually test this. Let me put all my actual da uh, details in now. Uh, sorry, I missed an area. We're not, we're not done yet. Uh, we, need a, we need to be able to uh, trigger this function. So we're going to have if the request type in the URL is inserts we're then going to run the insert the data function. Now we can go through and go through and do the actual insert. So let me put my details in and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got our API information table here in PHP MyAmin, uh, and I've just got a URL, uh, a browser up with um, just nothing at the moment. So we're going to go to the actual specific URL. So it's forward slash API dev forward slash request dot PHP. Now I need to send through that request type variable and it was insert. And we also needed to send through the other information. So the post title is hello, hello world. We're gonna put a space in and see what happens. Uh, we're gonna also do post information. This is my information. So nothing crazy, I'm going to hit enter. And so we get a blank screen because we have no sort of end state, like at the end of the file, we want to say, hey, this was inserted successfully, or hey, you're at the end of the file or anything like that. But if we go now to our PHP Maya min page here, and we're going to hit refresh on here, we'll now see an entry with ID one, hello world, this is my information, and the creation date uh, UTC time. So this isn't actually, I'm not doing this at 3.50 in the morning. <laughs> um, I'm actually doing this in the afternoon, but um, that is uh, UTC time, so universal time code. Uh, if you wanted to then find out that this, uh, what this was at your specific time, you would convert using a time zone converter. Um, but that is it, that, that's the insert process. So now, we're going to jump in and do the reading process. Okay, so we're back in Sublime. We're going to do the reading process now. So we're going to create another function here, uh, which we're going to call read the data. You know, just really creative uh, names these. Read the data, and what we're going to do is we're going to take in um, uh, an ID, and we're going to call it get the data. And the, fun and, the uh, and the variable name is going to be ID as well. And we're th then just going to write a really simple SQL statement. So we're going to go SQL equals select from, uh, sorry, select all from, wow, learn to type here. Select all from API information where the ID equals the ID variable here. And so then we're effectively doing the same sort of thing here where we're obtaining information out and then returning it to the user. Uh, so in this specific case here, we're effectively, uh, well, sorry, actually, we're, we're re retrieving that information. In our case, because we're querying on the uh, identifier, we know that it's going to be just a, um, a single row. Um, 
but if you were to be querying uh, at something a bit more generic like looking for post titles that include this specific name or something like that then we would be needing to iterate through some information so in our case we're still going to run the um, connection query uh, the line here and we're just going to copy and paste that and we're going to say um, still here we're no sorry uh, we're, we're going to need to run this sort of thing but we're going to we're going to change this around so that uh, instead of it just providing an error back because it's possible that you request a piece of information that's not there so we're running a request um, we're going to go if if it's empty if the results are empty then we're going to say hey there's nothing that was found so we're going to say failed to select data from mysql table uh, otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to handle the output here this is not a great way to write code it's just a way to uh, demonstrate basic mysql uh, usage so we're going to say uh, for each result uh, for each result sorry as a result uh, we're going to echo echo out some information so we're going to put this in uh, an unordered list so we're going to put a ul at the top and we're also going to close that afterwards and inside here we're going to have list item and in this we want to just show um, we want to show the, the related information so we're going to have the post title first so the results post title uh, separated by a dash and then we're going to also include the result post information and that will be then in a list uh, in our case it's only going to be one because we only have one result but that's going to show up in a list format um, to the end user the information that they've requested so we then need to expand our little um, function down or information down below here where uh, we also need to set uh, an else if else if the, the request type is uh, I'm just gonna say get 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 info so if they're requesting to get info we want to run the read the data function uh, where it's going to echo out the information uh, to the user so now let's go back to Chrome and let's uh, run this request so uh, bring Chrome back up and in here we're gonna say what did we say again <laughs> I've already forgotten at this stage get info so get info and get rid of all this stuff afterwards so the request type is get info and the ID equals one and so now we have the hello world this is my information returning back to the screen and so this in a real big nutshell is the basics of an API. And so that's it guys. That's how you take a basic level hosting package, creating tables, creating the reading, the writing, and create a real basic level API. As I said throughout the video, it is basic. It's not like it's a full on indestructible API. It's, it is really um, simple usage uh, but it is a really easy starting ground to creating your own api where you take it from here i'd love to hear shoot it through in the comments